My name is Igor Vamos. I'm a, a faculty in the arts department. I've been here for 15 glorious years. Most of my uh, adult life, I wish. I'm, I'm unfortunately very old, so. Um, yeah, that's why I've started to decide that what I'm doing now, I should spread to the masses. And the project I want to talk to you today is a project to uh, match people, it's kind of uh, match.com for uh, activist projects in the troublemaking, sort of similar to what we've been doing with the Yes Men for a number of years. So Yes Men, we're an activist group, and we uh, are also considered artists in some circles, or hackers in some circles, or reality hackers, or what have you. But we uh, infiltrate business meetings and then uh, provide a sense of comic relief for audiences. So I'll give you an example of the type of thing we've done. I'll just uh, show some video here, if I can find it. Um, yeah, here's a video. We wanted to make a political point about an organization that's pulling off some of the world's biggest hoaxes. No, not this organization. The one across the street. The one that looks like a US government office, but really is working against the government. In reality, the US Chamber of Commerce is a large corporation that is reported to lie to the public on behalf of even bigger corporations. They spend nearly half a million dollars a day trying to convince the US government to do really stupid shit like killing environmental regulations and undermining workers' rights. But since they spend so much money on their hoaxes, many people believe them. And as it says, American free enterprise dream big, but their dreams are our nightmares because their plans are to prevent us from passing climate change legislation, which means we're screwed. Since the chamber was hoaxing us all, we decided to fight fire with fire. We would reveal one of their biggest lies by masquerading as them. We would hold a press conference as the Chamber at the National Press Club. How would the world react to the Chamber suddenly reversing its position on climate change? But a reversal on climate change from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It will reverse its position on the climate change bill and once a carbon tax, if you will. All right, so the U.S. Chamber is denying it now. All right, so maybe not. Apparently it was a hoax. Either there is a group or some people or a person. Is there any involvement of the White House whatsoever? Uh, I couldn't even begin to go there, Larry. This is the item we got. It has the Chamber's logo that we're all very familiar with. Today, the country's largest business lobby, the Chamber of Commerce, got punked. It began early this morning when a press release went out, purportedly from the United States Chamber of Commerce. Amazingly, the release said that the Chamber would now support this legislation that it spent months fighting against. Reporters were surprised and probably confused at this odd turn of events, but that was nothing compared to what actually happened at the press conference when it was held later on this morning. Watch this tape. Clean coal is, is a, a technology that has not only not been proven, it basically doesn't exist. Okay, this is, uh, I'm Eric Wolfschlegel, I'm with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Um, this is not an official U.S. Chamber of Commerce event. Um, so, I don't know what pretenses you're here. I know some of you uh, in the press world, but this is a fraudulent press activity and a stunt. Who are you really, sir? And do you have a business card? Are you with the U.S. Chamber? I, I do. We can discuss afterwards. Okay. Can but I see your business card? Can I see yours? Are you here representing the U.S. Chamber of Commerce? Yes, I am. Okay, well, I work there, and you do not look familiar to me at all. Could I see your business this card? Stunt? Could I see your business this card? Is Are you interrupting? Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, this guy does not represent the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Can we finish okay? the Okay. No. This is not an official Chamber of Commerce. This is not. Uh, 
What is your position at the Chamber of Commerce? I just spoke my position. We've got working. What is your What is your title and your official title with you? I'm Commerce? the assistant to Mr. Donahue. Okay. This guy is a fraud. He's lying. Um, this is, you know, a stunt that I've never seen before. So if you'd like to actually talk to the legitimate Chamber of Commerce, I've got my business cards outside. This gentleman, I will assure you, does not have any business cards, and he's not legitimate. Show me your business card. No, show me yours. No, show me yours. Yeah, they both look like imposters. <laughs> what? But it's you just, a business card? I, it's so weird, though. But you don't you, look familiar. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce says it was victimized. Victims of a hoax by environmental activists. A hoax actually led to the, the Chamber admitting that there is is a challenge for climate change. It seems like a good first step. So next up, hoax is about poverty, violence, education. hunger. We're educa the big a education hoax. We've got the, the big the, education the hoax. The hoax is a good first step. Yeah. Just today, the Chamber of Commerce changed positions, not courtesy of the yes men with right, that right, stunt right. in Washington a few weeks ago. But they're now saying, uh, surprisingly to me, and I'm glad about it, that they want to get legislation, and they're now working with the sponsors of the bill. By now, is about we did about four years ago. Um, it wasn't just Mike and Andy working on it. You know, it was actually a whole bunch of people, and a lot of them we found through a mailing list that we've been developing over the years. So when we went around, we have, we put out a movie in 2003, and uh, we would go around with the movie, and everywhere we went and showed it, people would sign up to this list and offer to help with a variety of different skills. Um, you know, some highly skilled people and some people who just wanted to do specific things, wanted to show up for an event like this. And so when this was going down, we used our database to find people in Washington, D.C. It's geo-targeted, but it doesn't have a whole lot of extra frills. But we found people in Washington, D.C. who could do things like show up and pretend to be fake reporters, who could help write press releases, who could help set up websites, that kind of thing. So we've been working with a lot of people on our mailing list for now about, I would say, five or six years. And we've always wanted to sort of take it to the next level. In other words, not just ask people for help doing things ourselves, but to put people in touch with each other who wanted to do things together so that we weren't at the center of it having to make things happen. It's a question of sort of scalability. Um, and, uh, so this is the old, uh, this is sort of the, the old form that we used for our database that Andy wrote. Andy just uh, wrote this database that just let us, you know, uh, geo-target, and then people can identify a certain number of skills that they might have. For example, and these are just done with check boxes right now: acting, costume design. Uh, you have the legal support, um, a place to stay, which is also really useful. This is our own sort of version of couch surfing. If we want to go stay anywhere, we can find people. But this would go for uh, anybody who is doing a project on this new system that we're calling the Action Switchboard. Um, so basically, the Action Switchboard, we've got a whole bunch of sort of mock-ups developed here. Um, but the idea is that it's a... Uh, let me see. Oops, wrong key shortcut. Um, zoom out. See, when you're doing this in front of like a corporate meeting and you're pretending to be Exxon or something, they actually just think you're more real because, <laughs> because you're, you're making mistakes and nobody who's actually giving a real presentation would do that, right? Um, <laughs> No, they, they, they just, it's uh, more convincing to somebody if you're actually a little bit bumbling when you, when you uh, present in a corporate environment. Anyway, right now, basically the idea of the Action Switchboard is that it's a website that, uh, that has this database on the back end of it. The database is right now being handled by something called City CRM, which is a customer relations management tool or open source customer relations management software, which is meant for things like <coughs> being able to keep track of donors for a nonprofit organization, being able to keep track of participants, volunteers. So it's meant to um, keep track of your relationship with so-called customers, which um, in the nonprofit world is usually more like volunteers and that sort of thing. Um, 
So uh, that's the sort of what's meant to be at the back end. And then at the front end, it's basically a bunch of projects, or what we're calling schemes. And these schemes would each be a project like what you saw there, infiltrate the US Chamber of Commerce, uh, at, or you know, pretend to be them, and uh, make fun of their climate policy. Um, could be a project. And then by going on the, this uh, site, you'd be able to go and find people who might want to work on the project with you. That you'd be able to, uh, people would be able to get in touch with you if they saw the project and enjoyed it or, or liked it. Or you would be able to email people who had indicated, for example, that they were interested in working on climate activist projects and they had specific skills. Like if somebody checked the box saying they were a designer. There's a whole bunch of features that we were planning on building in that would help people determine if somebody was reliable. You know, for example, if somebody was a decent designer or not. Um, and that would be sort of voting up, that sort of thing um, is, is it in part of the plans. But anyway, we have, we have a lot of really involved um, specs documents and stuff. I'm not actually on the development team. Um, I'm more like on the creative end. So I can't actually get into a lot of detail with you guys about how it works. But if you're interested in it, then what I do is hook you up with our development team. It's being done by a co-op called Global that did a lot of stuff around Occupy. They did the inter-Occupy uh, um, website, things like that. They're, um, they do a lot of commercial projects as well as a lot of nonprofit projects. Um, the website itself will be in Drupal, um, and then the back end is this Civi CRM thing, which is actually kind of, from what I understand, a bit of a pain in the ass. Our old database was really, really fun because it was so simple. I mean, you saw that thing with all the little drop-down menus, and I could do things very quickly, like if I wanted to write an email to everybody in Montreal, as I did earlier today, um, because of a, a project that's going on that's a lot of fun, it's this project right here. It's called Save Canada. Right now, basically, there's this thing called the Energy East Pipeline. If you've heard of the Keystone XL Pipeline, um, that's the pipeline that they want to build from the tar sands down through the United States to the Gulf of Mexico so that they can sell that heavy oil, the tar sands oil, to uh, China and Europe. And uh, there's a lot of people who have been trying to block that because um, once they get a pipeline for that tar sands oil, they up production. And tar sands oil takes so much oil to actually um, extract the petroleum that we need for our cars that it has five times the environmental footprint that light, sweet crude does from a place like Saudi Arabia. So it's incredibly envi environmentally impacting. And there's a lot of people trying to stop it so that we can you know, have a fighting chance at a livable future. Um, so uh, anyway, there's this group that went and started to, uh, they, there's this, sort of the protest the Trans Canada uh, spills. I'll just show you their little video because it's kind of it's cute, it's nice. Here we go. Trans Canada is planning another pipeline. This time to send tar sands crud to the east coast. And they are employing a new tactic to silence opposition. Instead of holding a town hall which would allow citizens to see how many others are concerned, they have a trade show format where an army of TransCanada reps can limit questions and conversations to a one-on-one -on -one level. The result? Folks don't get to see how widespread the opposition is in their own community. So when TransCanada came to our town to promote their pipeline, we made handouts and outfits nearly identical to TransCanada's own, but branded instead as Save Canada. We hit the floor to work at their event, and it really worked. Attendees had a choice. They could ask their questions to the uneasy looking people in navy shirts, but instead they chose to share their concerns with us, the helpful, happy people in navy shirts. Instead of listening to TransCanada's scripted spin, everyone was talking about the risks. Connections were made, people were empowered, and a town once paralyzed by the unstomachable obstacle of a heavily backed tar sands catastrophe had now blossomed into a powerful and mobilized community. Now it's spreading. Concerned citizens from all over are joining Save Canada. You too are invited to join us, to dress up as them, to reach more of everyone, to help stop this thing. Because this thing threatens everybody.
everything, everything, me and you. Join us. Save Canada. All right. <coughs> so uh, that's their project, basically. And they got a bunch of uh, brochures and stuff that people can you know use on the website but then here are all these um, upcoming trans canada open houses these replacements for the community forums that they normally would be required to have and uh and so today for example i was just gonna email the people who are near terrebonne which terrebonne anybody here speak french ish it means like good earth right it's kind of comic in a way I mean, it's good earth now. But if there's a tar sand spill, there might be an error, there might be worse there. They actually had a massive oil spill in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I don't know if you heard about this, Battle Creek, Kalamazoo, where the entire Kalamazoo River was killed. This was just a few years ago. That's the original place where Kellogg's, you know, the, the cereal, and Kellogg was originally a health nut, and the waters were seen as this healthful thing back in the 19th century that people went for miles around to bathe in. But now, basically, you're bathing in a toxic mess because they had the largest oil spill in the history of the Midwest there just a few years ago, right after the Gulf blowout that everybody heard about and overshadowed the news about that other smaller yet still massive spill. So this is the same thing. It's a bitumen pipeline that's uh, meant to take this heavy oil across right next to the St. Lawrence Seaway, the whole way along, all the way to Quebec where they loaded onto ships and ship it off mostly to Europe because the highest price for diesel is in Europe. Um, so yeah, it has nothing to do with energy security. That's what they'd have you believe. Um, anyway, I tried to email all these people from Terrebonne on our old system and it works great. But doing it in City CRM requires three or four steps. You first have to export a subset of the list and then, um, and then you have to put that subset back into the database and email them. And apparently that's the type of thing that we could fix if there was somebody who was willing to dig in a little bit, talk to our developers, and, uh, and create a system where we didn't have to go through those steps. And it would save us a lot of trouble in the long run. So um, anyway, that, these are the kinds of projects though that you would be helping with if you were helping with developing the system, the action switchboard. Any questions? This, by the way, is probably a longer term thing. We're in sort of phase one of development. We're looking for having a kind of beta system by the end of November. But then uh, we'd be able to keep developing it and adding uh, more to it, making it more functional as time goes on. So if anybody wanted to participate in this, it could also be a project that would be ongoing, sort of like I noticed RPI TV, some of you worked on that uh, last spring, and their needs are continuing, and that's the type of thing that we could kind of ease into, and then um, once you had your head around it, we could figure out what more is needed and what's easy to plug into. All right. Thank you.